everyone. Today I'm sharing with you 10 easy side dishes for dinner time. Now, being a mom of five, I guess a busy working mom, sometimes days just don't go as planned. For example, sometimes your baby decides she doesn't want to take a nap right during your scheduled filming time. Or your daughter forgets her lunchbox. Or you're all ready to have a delicious meal when you realize your meat is still frozen and you're not gonna have that that night. Or your little baby barfs on you right before you're about to walk out the door. Now there's a lot of things that could go wrong in the day. So I thought I'd share with you some of my favorite wins and those are side dishes. So these side dishes, super simple, super easy. And hopefully it will make dinner just a little bit easier for you guys. All right, let's jump into the recipes. The first recipe I'm making is mini garlic monkey bread. Now I love this because it only takes a few minutes to throw together and to cook. All right, for this recipe, you need two cans of biscuits. You need some butter, some garlic, some Parmesan cheese, and a little bit of parsley, and that's it. All right, you're first gonna take six tablespoons of butter and we're gonna microwave it. Next, two tablespoons of dried parsley, so it calls for four cloves of garlic. We're just gonna guess there. And about a fourth cup of grated Parmesan cheese. We're gonna add a little more because it's better that way. And we're just gonna mix this all together. Now for the fun part, the biscuit. So you're gonna take each biscuit and cut it. I just like to use scissors. You can use a pizza cutter too, or a knife, whatever works for you. And we're just gonna cut your biscuit into fourths. Okay, so I've done one can of biscuits. I'm actually just going to throw in about six pieces at a time. There we go, six. We're gonna cover them all, and then we'll put them into the muffin tin. If you can hear that noise in the background, that is my baby sucking hard on her binky. Then you're gonna take your muffin tin and take those six pieces and you're gonna have six pieces in one tin. So you're gonna have to kind of mush them in there. This is monkey bread, so we like them smushed. Now these biscuits are kind of big, so we're actually, I think we'll just fit five on here today. All right, you're gonna cook these in the oven at 400 degrees for about 12 minutes. I'm gonna go 10 first just to watch them. Okay, look how fun that is. Monkey bread. Next up is our pistachio jello salad. Now I love this because it only takes about five minutes from start to finish and you just dump everything in and mix it together. All right, the first thing you need is pistachio jello. Now this is instant pudding. You wanna make sure you get instant. Next, we're gonna just have some pineapple tidbits, some Cool Whip, yes, bananas, and marshmallows. That's all you need. All right, first thing we're gonna add is the pistachio jello just into the bottom of the bowl. Next, we're gonna add just our pineapple juice, not the pineapple yet. Then you're just going to whisk it up really good till it's nice and smooth. Next is my favorite part, the Cool Whip. If you've been around for a while, you know how much I love it. <laughs> so we're just gonna add eight ounces of Cool Whip, so like a whole little container. Then you're just going to slowly, <laughs> not slowly, but mix in all the pudding with the Cool Whip. And if you need to grab a spoon, it might make it a little bit easier than a whisk to mix all together. So now you have like your base. We're gonna add the good stuff inside. So we have the rest of the pineapple. We use the juice, now we just want the pineapple. We like to add marshmallows. So on the recipe, it calls for two cups of marshmallows and we're just gonna kind of eyeball this. If you need more marshmallows, go for it. All right, and then we just have two bananas that we're just going to cut into little slices. I like to make them pretty small, so they're bite size. But yeah, right into the bowl. Now it's time to carefully mix this all together. Warning, you will want a little bit bigger bowl just because there is a lot. This makes quite a bit. All right, guys, this is done. And that is it. I love that it just takes five minutes. You don't even have to wait for it to set up. You could serve it right now. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit healthier, next up is our Instant Pot green beans. So I have two tablespoons of butter, one cup of water, one pound of green beans. And then on top of the green beans, I'm gonna add just a little bit, like a teaspoon of garlic. And go ahead and put your lid on, make sure it's all the way tight. You're gonna turn it again to sealing so it will pressurize and you're gonna go all the way down to five minutes. Now I cook mine for five and they're really well done. You can even do two minutes and they'll still be good. Now when it shows the L, that means that the timer is done 
and you're ready to let the steam out. So that's called a quick release. So I turn the little knob, once all the pressure is out, my lid will come off and my beans are ready to go. So all I have to do is mix them around a little bit. Now one of my favorite things is when the garlic pressurizes, it kind of pressurizes the garlic flavor into all of the beans. It's one of my most favorite things to make. So these beans are done and we are all ready to serve. So I like to serve them in just a serving dish, individual bowls, however you like to do it. Now I love this one for summer. This is our three ingredient avocado salad. You just need two avocados, a little bit of little tomatoes and then a jar of artichokes. Go ahead and chop up your tomatoes. I like to make them into small bite-sized pieces. And go ahead and dump those into your serving bowl. Next, we're gonna cut up the avocados. I also like to put these, cut these into small bite-sized pieces because you don't want a huge bite of avocado and nothing else. Next, we're gonna chop up some artichokes, depending on how many you like. This is a large jar of artichokes. I'm cutting up about half of them. Now for a little bit more flavor, I like to add a little bit of the liquid that artichokes were sitting in and then just mix it up. Now it's almost corn season. Instant Pot corn is our next recipe. I love doing this way more than I love boiling my corn. Now if you've never made corn in the Instant Pot, now's the time to do it. You don't have to watch it, you don't have to wait for it. So I took one cup of water and I threw four ears of corn on. You could add probably one more in a six quart Instant Pot. Now if you're using a three quart one, go ahead and split the corn in half. If you're using an eight quart, you can add more corn if you want. All right, we're gonna close the lid and put it on sealing. And now for my favorite part, because it really doesn't take a lot of time, I'm gonna push manual and go all the way down to five minutes. Now, once it's done, I do a quick release so I can eat my corn faster. But if you do need to wait a little bit, it is fine just to sit in the Instant Pot until dinner is ready. This is a family favorite. We had it growing up all the time. So next up is our honey carrots. Now I love to use these bagged carrots because I usually mix everything in this bag, but my three-year-old got to it first and got a little hole. So now I'm gonna mix it all together in a Ziploc bag for you. Next, you're gonna pour about three tablespoons of olive oil onto your carrots. Go ahead and zip up the bag with a little bit of air, but not a ton of air. And you're going to mix that olive oil around so it will cover every single carrot. Then go ahead and dump your carrots onto a cookie sheet. Now I usually like to take that same bag and kind of just spread them around. You don't want carrots on top of each other when they cook. Next you're gonna add about a teaspoon or so of salt, just spreading it all along the carrots evenly. You're gonna do the same with pepper. If you don't love pepper, you don't have to add it, but I love pepper with these carrots. Next, you're gonna drizzle about three tablespoons or so of honey right on to your carrots. You just wanna make sure every carrot gets a little bit of honey. When you're done, you're gonna go ahead and bake those at 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes or until your carrots are the texture that you like them. I like them very cooked, so I go about 30 minutes every time. Now I like to add just a little bit more honey on top right before I serve them just to get that little added sweetness. It's my favorite. I love having vegetables as a side, so our next recipe is Parmesan zucchini sticks. So for this recipe you need some small crumbled Parmesan cheese, two eggs, three zucchinis, and then some Italian panko breadcrumbs. Now you want to cut up your zucchini so they're about the size of normal fries. Now if you have foil, you want to line a cookie sheet with foil, it will make your cleanup so much better. So now I need two containers for my mixture. So I'm using cake pans. We're gonna put two eggs in one, mix it up really good. And in the other pan, we're gonna add about a half a cup of the panko crumbs, and then about a fourth a cup of the Parmesan. Then just mix that up until it's well combined. Now it's time to put it all together. So I have my zucchini all cut up, ready to go. So you're gonna take few pieces, I did a few pieces at one time, and just kind of mix them around in the egg mixture. Then you're just gonna put it right over into the crumbs, the panko crumbs, bread crumbs, yeah, that's what it's called. The panko and Parmesan, and then just put it right onto your cookie sheet. Then just do the same thing with all of the zucchini. And when you are all done, it is time to bake. So we are going to preheat the oven to 425 degrees. We are going to cook these for about 10 to 12 minutes until they are nice and baked. 
After the 10 to 12 minutes, go ahead and open it up. You're going to flip over the fries as carefully as possible, not to burn yourself, please. And then you're going to close the oven and we're gonna cook them for about another 10 to 12 minutes. Then when they are all the way done, just pull them out. They should be nice and browned and they're kind of crispy, just like fries. Your kids won't even know that these are zucchini. Next up is our three ingredient Parmesan rolls. For this recipe, you need 12 frozen dinner rolls, a half a cup of butter, I like salted butter, and then one cup of Parmesan cheese. Now I microwave my butter in a microwave safe bowl and we're going to dip the frozen roll, it's totally frozen, into the butter. Mix it around a little bit, then you're gonna go straight into the Parmesan. Mix it, if you need to press Parmesan onto it, you can, then you're going to put it into a nine by 13 pan that has been sprayed with non-stick cooking spray. Now you're just going to continue this step until all 12 rolls are onto your pan. Now these rolls need to rise, so we're going to cover them with saran wrap and put them in a warm place. I like to put them kind of in the sun or just a spot where it's gonna be warm so they will rise a little faster. Now once they are doubled in size, go ahead and put them in the oven. You're gonna cook them at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes or until they are golden brown on top. Next up is Instant Pot Creamy Mac and Cheese. Now it could be a main dish, but I'm using it as a side dish today. Now my noodle of choice today is small shell noodles. Noodles. So you just need one pound of noodles. Then you're gonna put them in the bottom of your Instant Pot. You're gonna take your pot and fill it just until the noodles are covered with water. Next, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure it's sealed correctly. Now, if you have a knob, you wanna turn it to sealing, not venting. Next, you'll push manual or pressure cook button and go to four minutes. Now, after a few seconds, it will say on. That means you're good, you can walk away. Now after the four minutes, you can turn the knob to release it, but just beware with pasta, sometimes it makes a giant mess. So you can turn it back and forth, releasing the pressure slowly. Once all the pressure's out, go ahead and lift the lid up and your pasta should be done. Now I didn't need to drain any water because there was no water left to drain. So go ahead and mix up your noodles before you add the other ingredients. So first I'm gonna add about eight tablespoons of butter. I like to use salted butter. That's my favorite in macaroni and cheese. Next, you're gonna add about a half a cup of milk. Now we're gonna add a little bit more, but right now we're just gonna add half a cup. Then we're gonna add two cups of sharp cheddar white cheese. Did you hear that? Sharp cheddar cheese, it is amazing. And then about a half a cup to a cup of shredded Parmesan. So now it's time to just mix everything in. So slowly, gently mix it in. Now it'd be easier to push the saute button just to get it warm or warmer on the bottom to melt your butter faster and to melt your cheese faster. Now because it is really cheesy, you wanna make sure to add just a little bit more liquid just so you can make it creamy, not so chunky cheesy. So I added a half a cup more of milk. Then you're just gonna continue mixing until all of your butter is melted and all of your cheese is mixed together. Now you can add just a little bit of salt and pepper. I just like to add salt in my mac and cheese and then go ahead and mix that in as well. Now when you're all done, your cheese should be nice and creamy. This is how we like it. Now when I serve it, I also like to add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. And my last recipe is Instant Pot Potato Salad. I love this because you can cook your eggs and your potatoes at the same time. So this recipe calls for eight red potatoes chopped up into small bite-sized pieces. They'll cook better in the Instant Pot if they're smaller. Then it calls for eight eggs, but because I love hard-boiled eggs, I'm actually gonna stick all 12 eggs into the Instant Pot. And as you can see, I am putting them right on top of the potatoes. Now everything needs to pressurize, so add one cup of water right on top of everything. Now you're just gonna put your lid on and make sure that your little knob is on sealing because you want it to pressurize. Now I push the manual button because I use manual for almost everything and go all the way down to six minutes. When you're done, go ahead and switch it over to venting so it can release its pressure. Now while the pressure was releasing, I ran and grabbed a bowl of water, ice water, the ice melted rather quickly, so I can put my eggs right into it. Now don't be alarmed that my eggs are a little speckled. I did wash my potatoes, but there's always some things that you do miss. Plus, I, love, I leave the skins on my potatoes, which also causes the eggs to be 
a little speckly. So as you can see, I am just putting my eggs right into the ice water. Now I'm just gonna take my potatoes and wash them and strain them in cold water. So first I'm gonna add 3 fourths cup of pickles. Whether you like dill or sweet, it doesn't matter. I love dill pickles. I'm gonna set that to the side for a minute while I make the mixture, the good stuff. So I have one cup of mayonnaise and I'm adding two tablespoons of mustard. Then I added a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic salt, you can use normal salt if you like, and then you're gonna add one teaspoon of vinegar or you can use your pickle juice. Then add one teaspoon of sugar on top. Go ahead and stir it all together. Now this recipe does only call for two tablespoons of mustard. I added about three because my family and I, we love mustard. All right, now it's time for the eggs. They should be all ready to go once you put all that other stuff together. So I'm just gonna go drain them and dry them a little bit. Now, one thing I love about the Instant Pot is that it cooks your eggs perfectly. And you only have to do it for six minutes when it's on top of the potatoes because the potatoes actually make them cook even faster. So the eggshell comes off so easy and now you're just gonna dice them right up. I like to do small bite-sized pieces to make it easier for everyone. Now I chopped up eight eggs, so all the eggs will be going in. Now when my mom made this, she used to cook extra eggs also because she would slice them up and put them on top. But okay, now we're gonna get to the sauce. You're just gonna dump the sauce right on and just mix it all around. Now, if it's a little too dry, you can always add a little bit more mayonnaise or a little bit more mustard, depending on what you like. Now, as you're mixing, try and mix as gently as you can so you don't smash the potatoes and smash the eggs even more. You want them in whole pieces. All right, now if you want some delicious main dishes to go with the side dishes, you can find some of my favorites right up there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now would be the time. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.